Hello and welcome back to Batch Reviews. Now, Peugeot is a car company that has absolutely reinvented itself over the past few years. It seems like every single new car they launch is better than the model it precedes it, and they really do exceed our expectations. This is their latest car, the 408, and in this video, I'm going to take you all the way around it. We're going to look at the interior, we're going to look at the design, we're going to look at the practicality, we're going to talk engines. Well, everything you need to know about it, in fact. So if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments box below. Now, when it was rumoured that Peugeot were going to expand their C-segment range, everybody thought they were going to be producing a coupe SUV, perhaps a coupe SUV version of the 3008. But this isn't a coupe SUV. Peugeot call it sort of a high-riding fastback, and it really does look that, doesn't it? And of course, the clue is also in the name, 408. If this were an SUV, it would be called 4008. Now, in terms of customers, Peugeot think it's going to appeal to two main customer bases. The first are people who want a slightly larger car than a traditional hatchback, such as the Peugeot 308. And the other set of customers are people who want something a little bit more distinctive, a little bit more original than an SUV. The other little interesting nugget about this car is it took seven years for Peugeot designers to actually get the board, the Peugeot board, to sign it off because at the time it was seen as a really radical piece of design. I'm so glad they did because <laughs> just look at it. It looks terrific, doesn't it? I'm going to get behind the camera now to allow you to have a proper good look around this new 408. Right then, let's start at the side. Now you can see this isn't an SUV in terms of proportions. It's actually quite slim like a hatchback and it's just slightly risen up, slightly high riding, of course, to take advantage of the fact of how popular SUVs are. Now with that very sloping roof line, you can see what Peugeot mean by it being a fastback, but it's not a traditional fastback really, because if it were, it would start sloping down from around this area pretty sharply downwards, but it doesn't. It remains pretty flat along here, and then it drops away. It's got a nice gentle arcing curve on the roof. So it gives you that fastback kind of sporty profile, but of course it means there's still plenty of room in the back. Now, talking about space, the wheelbase is actually equivalent to a Peugeot 508. So it gives you an idea of where this car is being positioned. It's being positioned as a bit of a sort of a GT kind of practical, stylish car that's still got plenty of space inside. Now, the alloy wheels are a particular highlight for me these are the wheels you see in the launch pictures and in the launch video. It's very much the launch alloy wheel for this car. Now the wheel sizes for the 408, they range from 17 inches to 20 inches. These are the 20s and they've got this lovely geometric design. Um, one thing to say is they are optional on the hybrid models such as this, but I think it's definitely a uh, an option box to tick because I think they look absolutely tremendous and of course in the center there you've got the new Peugeot logo as the center cap and then up on the door you've got the Peugeot new Peugeot shield as well there's no denying what car this is round to the front then and just like we've seen on many new Peugeots, particularly the 308, you've got this long bonnet 
and these raised front wings. It gives the car a very solid stance, quite a feline, quite a sort of athletic design to it. Now the grille is actually worth noting. You can't really see it too much in this car because it's grey, but um, the, there are coloured little vertical slats in this car. They are body coloured, so it gives this kind of fading effect as if the, gr the grille is just fading away from the Peugeot badge into the wings of the car. In actual fact, we're going to see more of this design on Peugeot's future electric cars because of course they don't need a grille do they an electric car does not need a grille so this is sort of a, a hint of what is to come of course this car's got the new peugeot shield we first saw it on the 308 this is the second car to actually get it and it's not just a badge it's quite a clever piece of tech this because peugeot's decided to hide all of the well hide the car's main radar sensor there which is used for the uh, advanced safety systems and instead of having an awkward radar in the grille like most manufacturers do Peugeot has decided to stick it behind there and while we're here we just talk about the headlamps there's going to be various of course all four eights come with LED headlights but there's different combinations you can have including matrix LEDs and of course you've got the fang LED daytime running lights which run all of the time and have become very much a recent Peugeot design trait. Just coming back to the rear of the car, this is quite interesting. This is just a black piece of plastic here, but it gives the impression that the window area actually just squeezes down into the rear end. Here, actually, this is the plug-in hybrid model, so we've got the charging port here, all illuminated, and you can set a scheduled charge and you can lock it as well. But I just love the car from this angle. It's got that really proper fastback look to it, isn't it? And I just love the haunches as well. It just gives this car a properly sporting purpose to it. Now, it's a bit difficult to see on this grey car, but all of this area is black plastic and it neatly pushes into the wheel arch extension there as well. And what it helps to do, especially on a brightly coloured 408, it just helps to slim down the rear end. It makes it look a little bit lower, a little bit thinner and slightly better proportioned. And while we're here, another little design quirk are these little bits of bodywork here. Peugeot call them cat ears, but they are actually designed to improve the aero across the top of the car and then over the back of the car and also it's quite a nice little design touch as well, isn't it? Boot, right, let's look in here. Electric tailgate, all four eights get an electric tailgate and you actually get a pretty decent sized boot. 536 litres with the seats in, uh, in their normal position, 1611 once the seats are fully folded down. I'll fold those down in a moment but you can actually see it's a pretty square boot there is a bit of a lip here but you do have this metal uh, cover here to uh, if you scratch that particular area but it is a nice square opening and because it's a fast back you've actually got that slightly higher opening there it's far more practical than you'd find in a saloon or perhaps a traditional fast back you could say 12 volt socket there you've got some lash down eyes either side of the boot you've got a bit of netting here to store a few items and of course you've got some lights either side so the boot is nicely illuminated the parcel shelf actually rises up with the boot so you don't have to battle with that if you need better access to your boot but you have got a small thin parcel shelf that remains in place 60 40 folding seats as standard you do get a little ski hatch and they easily fold down with a tug of the handle there and the same on that side as well and you get a fairly flat loading area um, and what with this high boot floor which has some underfloor storage on the petrol models not on this one because it's the hybrid 
but you do get some extra underfloor storage under there. But because it's a pretty high level, you do get uh, an easy loading space to load those larger items and push them through to the front of the cabin. In the back, and thanks to the beauty of editing, I've already put the seats back up. Now this is actually a fairly practical space. Good amount of knee room back here, and the headroom is not too bad. I'm just under five foot 11, and I had around an inch or so to spare above my head. It did feel a little bit claustrophobic, what with the dark uh, seat material, and of course the dark roof material, but this is a fastback, isn't it? It's a coupe-like car, and of course that comes with a slight uh, consequence, but like I say, it's really not too bad. Now, you get a slight hump in the floor, you can fit a third person in the middle there, but they do sit up quite raised and there is an armrest there, which does give you access to the ski hatch. And in terms of isofix, they are revealed, they are just behind these little zips. So you can load those two child seats, both in outer seats, of course. And in terms of charging, you get two little USB-C charging ports down there to keep your devices charged up. Inside, and if you've spent some time in the 308, it'll all look very familiar in here because the 408 and the 308's interior was designed at the same time. In fact, they are near carbon copies. And that's a really good thing because I think the this dashboard design is terrific. I love the split levels. I love how the air vents are up nice and high. Then you get this intersecting piece of trim that runs across into the doors. Then you get this lovely squidgy plastic at this very severe geometric angle. It's all focusing your eye into the uh, central touch screen and then moving over to the driver's side, which of course would be right hand drive in the UK. All of the shapes and design just neatly comes together around the steering wheel. Now you'll note from this particular angle, the Peugeot i cockpit, which depending upon where you have the steering wheel completely blots out the dials. But we'll get around that because this is a walk around video after all, isn't it? So, um, so all cars get a 10 inch screen, i cockpit screen here. Um, GT models get a 3D effect, which we've got here, but it's quite difficult to show on the camera. But I'll try and explain it to you. You can see that the, this speedo here, the blue number, which says zero and ready, that feels as though it is just hovering in front of all the, the lime green dial there and the lime green colours there. Whereas the brake, press brake and start, that also looks as though it's hovering in front of the uh, petrol gauge and what have you. It's a really nice look actually and it helps give this car a proper, well to give this car a properly premium feel and something we've just come to expect from Peugeot in recent years. Now of course it's fully configurable, you can change the way it looks uh, to your heart's desire, to your desired um, look. And then over to the infotainment screen, now all 308s get this uh, glass infotainment screen. It's a really nice size, nice letterbox design. Um, and also the infotainment system itself, it is a whole lot better than previous efforts from Peugeot. It does feel as though Peugeot are finally getting the hang of this touchscreen infotainment system because it's quick, it's easy to use, and it looks great. Now you can go to the home screen by using your three fingers, and there we go. You've got your main menu with all of your different functions, and it works really well actually. Very quick, uh, you can pinch and zoom and do all this kind of stuff. This is a pre-production car, so it's a little bit slow, this navigation, but I've tried this in a 308. There we are, it's caught up. Um, 
it's, it's really quick and a cinch to use. One thing I really do like is this secondary screen here. Peugeot call it their eye toggles. You can configure all of them and you can move them around and what have you. And of course, when you change the ambient lighting, not only does the lighting in the doors change, but the color of the font and the icons also changes. They're just very easy and straightforward to use and you can change them and have them in whatever format you like. Um, Peugeot hasn't completely uh, followed the touchscreen trend because beneath you do have some physical controls which are the major ones which is you can turn off the climate control you can recirculate you can change the temperature your car settings are there and this is the volume knob coming down to the center console you've got your wireless charging pad there the gear selector which seems to appear in virtually every Peugeot and Citroen these days even some voxels you've got your drive mode select and beneath here You've got your cup holders and then you've got some extra bit of storage under here. Not only did I say I really like the design, but I love the quality. I mean, everything feels really well put together in here. It does feel like a premium car, this. And another thing I like about it is the different use of materials. So you've got sort of a mottled plastic on the top of the dash there. You've got uh, mesh in the seats here you've also got Alcantara and on some cars you even get coloured Nappa leather as well um, and the GT like this car it has an Adamite coloured design theme so we've currently got it in the uh, LED uh, ambient lighting but you can also see it in the stitching here it's sort of a Peugeot call it Adamite to you and me it's lime green Right then, let's talk engines. Now the lineup actually mirrors the 308s. Apart from the fact you don't get the diesel, what you do get is a 1.2 turbocharged petrol engine with 130 horsepower and two plug-in hybrids. They use a 1.6 turbocharged petrol engine and an 81 kilowatt electric motor. The first one has 180 horsepower, the other 225 horsepower and the electric range should mirror the 308. So you should get around 40 miles uh, from a full charge. All of the engines come with an eight speed automatic gearbox and there's gonna be a fully electric E408 coming along in the not too distant future. So I'm gonna be driving this car early next year, but in the meantime, what do you think to it? Do you like the design? Do you think it will catch on? Do you think it's one of Peugeot's best designs? Well, for all of those questions and many more, do feel free to drop them in the comments box below.